So I've been looking at these protests that have been happening across the United States at these universities. And, um, you know, you got the pro-Palestinian students and faculty members or whatever who are protesting the Israel, uh, the Israel and Hamas war. And they're really taking up for the Palestinians who are being killed by Israel, uh, you know, in the tens of thousands of numbers, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's like a slaughter. Um, and you know, it's mainly because, you know, given the history of Israel and, and what they did before in the past, when they was fighting all these proxy, uh, these, these proxy militants, uh, they were just bombing wherever they were. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You really can't tell who they are, um, except if you see someone with a gun. So you just bombing wherever you think they are. And these little proxy armies, man, they like to, they like to hide out in the city. So they're hiding amongst the citizens. So, you know, if if you get intelligence and and the intelligence says that there there are Hamas fighters in this hospital, I mean, bro, you you probably going to want to bomb the whole entire hospital or or either you know send troops in to take over that location and whoever you see with a gun kill them or you know I, I think that. I think that Israel is in a bad situation fighting a war like this because we was in the same situation, bro. You know, you don't really hear about it a lot, but you know, a lot of that was going on with us. You know what I'm saying? We were bombing places and killing like women and children just like uh, Israel is doing right now. You know, we was doing that when we was, uh, when we were fighting these wars in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, we were, you know, bombing and killing kids, you know, every day, you know what I'm saying? But you don't really hear about it because you won't hear about it here in America. I mean, they, they're not going to want to promote that type of uh, news here. You know, they, they don't want to sway public opinion. But this is going on. There are people being killed. In, there are Palestinians being killed in um, the Gaza Strip or whatever in that in that area in that region um, who are innocent you know what I'm saying they innocent they they just citizens I you know I wouldn't say that all of all of them are innocent but a majority of them are innocent and they just they're just civilians and they're just being killed you know what I'm saying and and somebody has to take up for those in those people that group of people somebody got to take up for them and. That's what you see going on on these campuses, campuses, um, these university campuses around the United States right now. It's like it's big news. It's always in the news. A different campus um, is in the news, you know, talking about, you know, the protesting that's going on on, on campus. And um, the Jews at these campuses are, you know, they're threatened by these pro-Palestinian protesters. They're threatened, you know, the, the, the students on the campuses at the universities, they are threatened. You know, they don't want to do certain things because they're Jewish, you know what I mean? And, and you got all of these people protesting for the Palestinians, which is cool, but at the same time, they are making these Jewish students feel uncomfortable. And um, and also these Jewish students are being, um, they are being, well, how can I say this? A lot of the, the foundations that are supplying these universities like Columbia, for, in, for instance, um, a lot of the foundations that have all the money are Jewish people. And they are looking at what's going on on the campuses, all this pro-Palestinian um, pro
protesting and um and some of these people have you know kids that go to these schools who are jews so they are like man someone has to has to you know protest for the jews there you know what i'm saying so the foundations who have all the money who have been supplying Columbia, for instance, and I'm sure this going on all across the nation, but these foundations that are run by Jewish families are, um, not given their, their, um, they're not giving the universities money anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're trying, they're making rules. They, they're like, you know, they're meeting with the presidents of these schools and saying, Hey, uh, you need to make sure that you have measures in place or rules in place that protect that will protect the Jewish students here. Don't make them feel uncomfortable going to the school or we will stop supplying your school with money, with funding for projects or whatever grants or whatever. We will stop funding uh, uh, sending you guys any money from our foundation. So that's what all the Jewish ran foundations are saying to the university presidents around the nation. They're like, look, man, we, we're not going to give you any money if you don't make these Jewish students here or, you know, faculty members as well. If you don't make these people feel comfortable being on this campus, and we're gonna we're gonna pull our funding from you know what I'm saying we, we we're gonna pull our funding we're not gonna fund your schools and see that's making the university presidents be like dang so we need to we need to do something about these pro Palestinian protests we need to do something about them so that's why they're being arrested and and you know um because they are for the most part from what I've seen you know I'm sure there may be small accident incidents where um there's some violence involved because there's always violence in, involved in in protesting to a certain degree it's usually very very small but for the most part the, the protesting has been peaceful but now since the university presidents are being threatened with no funding from the Jewish ran foundations, because you know the Jews got the money. You know that's that's a big thing. Uh, that's a well known thing that that you know we've always heard, and apparently it's a it's a true thing. I mean, this was going on with the Nazis. The Nazis, Hitler, Hitler and them had the same issue. I mean, it was it was a bit different, but and you know I don't want to talk about Hitler that clown, you know what I'm saying? While I'm talking about this Jewish, you know, when I'm, while I'm talking about Jews, so forget I said that, but, um, the university presidents are, are, you know, trying to, um, make sure that the Jewish students and faculty members, whoever these Jew Jewish descendants are feeling safe. So they are really ramping up, you know, the, police presence at the universities. You know what I'm saying? They, they're getting these protesters uh, um, arrested. Excuse me, arrested, man. I mean, you know, and um, by force. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, you know, the police are basically going up to the protesters and telling them, look, you can't be here anymore. It's not safe for other students. They really mean it's not safe for the Jewish, you know, the Jewish students or faculty members, you know what I'm saying? You gotta leave. We cannot have this here. You know, we can't have you guys taking up for the Palestinians when <clears throat> this whole war was started by Hamas, which, you know, everyday people can't really tell the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people out here on Main Street, bro, you know, they don't know. They think that because you know, a majority of the public think because you're pro-Palestinian, that means you're taking up for Hamas. <laughs> because, the, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a an analogy you can use for this war as a game. Like, you got team Hamas going against team Israel. 
And if you're not on a side, then you are, I mean, if you're on one side, then you are against the other side. That's how the public views it, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't really know, you know, we don't really know the intricate details about who is who and what is what, you know? I, I, I get that a lot, like my mother-in-law, my wife's mother, she asked me one day, she said, well, you know, when this first, uh, probably, I think she asked me around like December last year, two months after the uh, Hamas attack on uh, Israel, you know, she had asked me, she was like, what's going on down there? You know what, you know, what's going on is, is you know, she really didn't know anything about it. She only heard what she knew. She only knew what she heard about it. You know what I'm saying? And she really didn't know the difference. She didn't really know the differences between the Palestinians and Hamas. And she thought they were the same people. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, she didn't know anything about it at all. And just what you hear about it on, on the news or whatever. And, you know, the news is going, you know, they're going to give it to you simple, but it's it's going to be swayed, you know. The news is kind of biased, you know what I'm saying, because the, the people who run them, you know, they have to, you know, they're obligated to run certain stories if they are connected with the stories in some kind of way. So if you got any Jews that are running the, the main uh, news news companies, they are going to sway your opinion to where you feel more remorse for Israel than um, the Palestinians because in, they know that the public doesn't know the difference between Hamas and the Palestinians. They think that, you know, they are one and the same. But, you know, it's not really, you know what I'm saying? It's not really, you know, Hamas is Hamas and then the Palestinian civilians are Palestinian civilians and they are being killed you know what I'm saying? Um, in droves, man, in droves. And, and there are a lot of uh, Palestinian women who, who are pregnant and, you know, they don't have a functioning hospital to go to to have the babies. So you got a lot of women who are dying. Um, you know, uh, they may be just giving birth. I mean, the, the baby has to come out. You know what I'm saying? A baby got to come out or, you know, if it's... If a woman is far along enough, the baby has to come out, you know, whether, you know, either the baby dies or they both die, you know what I'm saying? Or, or you know, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe just the woman dies, you know, and then if she dies, the baby dies. I mean, well, you know, goes back to what I said is, is either both of them or one of them will be alive or die or whatever. And, uh, and, you know, that's crazy, bro. And, 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 you know, a lot of people are not even paying attention to that because America has you so swayed to feel sorry for Israel when really Israel is committing these crazy crimes and, like, killing people for no reason. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's... And like I said at the beginning of the video, you know, they're in a real bad place because you're fighting these, these little proxy armies, these, these groups that are in the Middle East. You're fighting these groups that don't wear a uniform, really. They really don't wear a uniform, and you really can't distinguish them from the population, from the rest of the population. So it's like I said in the beginning, like you get intelligence that... You know, you got some fighters over here. They're going to just send a bomb over there. And, th and these places in the Middle East, man, they be densely populated, bro. Like, you know, wh wherever there's a city at, you know, it's mostly desert. But where they got the cities at, bro, it's densely populated, bro. And it's under underdeveloped. You know, they don't really have a lot of technological type of advances there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of people are, like, right next to each other. So, um which is, you know, it's messed up, you know. So when, you know, so when you bomb and you, you when you drop a bomb, you're killing like, you know, 10,000 people, you know, a thousand people, a thousand to 10,000 or more people, you know, per bomb. And, um, and it's getting to a point to where, you know, I saw that Biden had 
mentioned that he was going to stop sending guns and weapons or whatever to Israel if they um, get into another conflict with another region or, or you know, or a group of people or whatever. I, I don't really remember what it, who it was, but you know, Biden was like, "We're going to stop sending guns and ammunition to Israel if they keep doing what they're doing." And what they're doing is just killing people. You know what I'm saying? They just, they they killing people. Their intelligence is, you know, I don't know. I don't really know too much about it. So I don't want to get too far into it. You know, why? I don't want to get into why they are killing a lot of civilians in this war. Um, it's, you know, it has to be the intelligence. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, part of it, like I said, is, is, you know, you're fighting a war against people who don't wear a uniform, so it's hard to, to figure out who is who. And then your intelligence may not be that good neither. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think I saw a headline that came out a few months ago about, you know, their intelligence. Like, they need, like, I think a, the Biden administration was telling them, like, bro, or, or the UN, maybe it was the UN, was telling them that your intelligence, man, y'all need better, more precise um, targets so you can limit the number of civilians that you guys are killing because you're killing too many people. And uh, it was it was a problem. I think in that article it was saying there was a problem with their intelligence. The UN was telling Israel, you got to have better intelligence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you need that. You need that because you can't. You cannot. We can't send. We can't. We can't sit around and watch you kill innocent people like this, bro. You know what I'm saying? We can't do it. And we under. You know the UN. The UN, like everyone else, understands that when you fight in wars in, in in these Middle Eastern countries, you know they don't wear any uniforms. Like I keep saying over and over and over. So it's hard to figure out who is who. It's hard to fight a war like that, bro. It's hard to fight a war like that. And see, that was the problem that we was having. I mean, I was in the military uh, for seven years, eight years. Uh, so I witnessed it. I witnessed it firsthand. You know what I'm saying? I, I heard about all the problems that these guys were having, the people who were in the field. You know what I'm saying? I was hearing about it all the time. Like, they really can't tell who is who, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know who an enemy and who's a friend. And you can have, like, a kid come up to you. I remember a guy saying that they had the kids were coming up to him, and these kids had guns on them, you know what I'm saying? Like, little pistols hidden in they, you know, in they outfits. And, and they, and they could have killed them, you know what I'm saying? They could have killed them. So what are you doing in that type of situation, man? You know what I'm saying? You just basically killing everybody. Because you don't know who is who. You don't know who to trust. You know what I mean? And you don't know who the enemy is and, and all that. So, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and that's what that's what Israel is going through right now. Um, you know, I always said that it's hard to fight a war against people like that. But it's smart for them. It's smart for... Oh, man. The freaking garbage truck. I gotta wait till this guy do this. But, you know, if you can hear me, it's smart to uh, fight a war with no, with no uniform. You know what I'm saying? If you fight in a war, if you... This freaking truck is so loud, I gotta get out of here. 